All right. I just uh, started working on the second soundboard that I have with my for my uh, twins for my tubes that I'm working on. This is a cedar which I glued together these two pieces, and I started with the flattening one side, and then just just to have some kind of flat surface, not shaving that much. And then other side and deciding about uh, which side is better to be on the top of the instrument, actually on the face of the instrument. Meanwhile, I was uh, reach the first soundboard to this stage, uh, which I flattening two sides. Uh, this side is not uh, shaped that much. Then I keep uh, the soundboard with uh, four or five millimeter working on inlays, perfilling around the sound holes and placing the sound holes and place the bridge uh, to see where these um, elements would be. So while the glue getting dry on this soundboard, I decided to start on working on the second one, which is the red cedar. So at this stage, you have to make sure that the uh, your table is completely flat. Also, the plane, the blade must be very, very, very sharp here, as, as much as you can, because the wood is very, very soft, and we need a very thin layer of shaving on the soundboard, and we need this kind of very flat surface remains after shaving. So I continue shaving on this side. I don't go very deep. I keep uh, three, four millimeter for hair filling and sound hole. Okay, I think that would be enough. Okay, after flattening two sides uh, to have at least one side completely flat and shine, I uh, put the ball on it and then draw the line to determine where my wood ball is going to be on the soundboard. Now I'm going to mark the place of the bridge of the sound holes and uh, the center line, this kind of stuff. Even with very soft clamps and not too much pressure, this wood can be easily damaged and you can see a, a very, very small scratches. Even with very tiny pressure, sometimes with the, it's like if I wear watch or any kind of things on my hand, I make some scratches on the wood. So I keep these extras for clamping the wood until the bracing part. So first, mm, because the wood is perfectly matched together, sometimes I miss the center line. So I'm going to draw the center line again. Of course, it is the joint place. I hope you could see uh, the lines on the video. I think it's very hard to see. But... So I got exactly 50 centimeter for my wood ball. I decided to uh, have an instrument with the 60 centimeter string length. So I got, I will have 20 centimeter for the neck and 40 centimeter on the ball so i measure 40 centimeter 
to place the bridge here on my wood ball so 40 centimeter for the bridge also um, I can divide this 40 in two parts I mean 20 centimeter for the center of the sound hole so the main sound hole is here the center the bridge will be here would be here so I will have 10 centimeter to the end of the ball 20 centimeter 20 centimeter and 40 from the neck to the to the bridge now I'm going to um, go for 10.1 centimeter from the center of the sound hole uh, goes down 10.1 then check it is exactly 10.1 10.1 exactly very nice so from this point I go for 7.6 centimeter here and 7.6 centimeter the other side so these two are the center of this of this two hole two small holes on the soundboard check it again final check we add here we add 10.1 here we got 60 76 millimeter here 7.6 here 7.6 here okay, very nice So the three for three dots. Uh, then I will uh, drill these three holes um, with the six millimeter uh, or to seven millimeter hole because the this my compass this my compass uh, shaft is seven millimeter. So I I want to drill three holes here to for my compass to um, to fix it on the soundboard to make these channels 